Hey guys, wanted to run down some advanced lead flow techniques and follow up boss. So I want to mention a couple of things up front. For one, this is only available to admin and owner level users. So if you're an agent, you're not going to even be able to see this or mess with it. Uh, if you are an owner or an admin, be very careful messing with this. This uh, isn't always as intuitive as it might seem. Uh, there's some some knowledge you need to have that I'll, I'll walk you through here in this video, but this is a very powerful tool. Uh, we want to be really careful that we're uh, not messing with anything um, when we're potentially editing it. So be sure to communicate with other team members uh, before messing with this. Another good tip that I do, um, depending on how long this lead flow is, you might screen grab it or do like a quick loom video just to record your existing settings before you start messing with things. Uh, it can be a great resource to be able to come back if something does funny happen um, or anything like that. You just want to have the ability to have maybe a historical record of like, oh, shoot, you know, I accidentally changed this to a different group or I changed the action plan on accident. And then you'll have a record of what it was. So um, to find the lead flow, um, you would be here under admin and then lead flow. It normally takes you right here because it's the first tab. There's three primary things this does, and it's assign an agent. So distribution here is assigning to an agent, group, or pond. It can assign a lender, which can also be uh, an individual lender or a group, which we'll dig into a little bit as well. Um, and it can assign an auto-apply action plan. So one of the cool things about this, uh, and you can be mindful here, these are generally automatically created. You can't add a new one. But um, a lot of news, these are, these are created by either API connections, uh, using your follow-up boss email address in the back end of a lead source, uh, or these just pulling from your email if you have lead processing turned on to pull from your email. So the way these lead flows are created is typically via the lead source or via a lead coming in. But once that happens, or once you create a new one or add a new one, you can click here on advanced settings and it's going to take you into a number of things that you can do here. So for example, if you're using some sort of landing page or something for open houses, if that landing page is tagging open houses, you can say, hey, if this lead from my website comes in with tag open house, I want to assign it to a certain agent or group of agents, assign it to a certain lender or group of lenders, and run a specific action plan. And this is a great example because you wouldn't send an action plan to an open house registrant of like, hey, thanks for visiting our website because they just went to an open house and you happen to have a landing page that is your sign-in sheet. But you might want to be able to send an action plan that says, hey, nice to meet you today. Here's my contact info. Um, you know, I'll follow up with you on Monday or, or something to that effect. But you could automatically have this triggered um, if you're using something like that. You can also route leads by zip code. So if you have certain agents that work in certain zip codes, you could say, hey, if it's this zip code or this zip code, route it to this group of agents. We're going to get into groups in just a minute. Um, you can also route by city or state at a higher level. So if you're in multiple states, this is a great way to route those potentially to other agents. City can be a little tricky just with spellings um, and things like that, but um, certainly an option. But zip code, I find, is an easy way to do this. So if I wanted to say, hey, you know, 30022 and 30075 need to go to a certain group of agents, this is where you do that. Again, same with lender and similar with an action plan. So you can do it by price. So if you wanted to say, hey, you know, show, take all the leads under 25,000 and send them to a, this rentals group. And if they're over 20, you can either make a rule for over 25,000, or if you don't have rules that, that solve for that, you're going to end up down here in the default. So if you want to just parse out rentals, send them to a rentals group, great. Everybody else is going to flow according here to this default rule. Or you can make an additional rule that says if the price is more than, you know, 25,001, then send to the buyer leads group. So there's so a lot of stuff you can do here with that. Also be very mindful of this default rule. Um, you know, if, you could make this go around Robin to people or um, if you want the agents to try to be the first contact, but you do also have like an ISA that could follow up, this could always go to them. A lot of different use cases 
um, that you could have here. Obviously, be sure you save these when that's the case. The other cool thing is once you build this, um, if you have some relatively complex things, uh, one quick thing to mention, you can also do this by MLS number. Um, it's a little tricky because MLS numbers obviously come and go as properties sell, but it is possible to route by MLS number. It does require a lot more updating versus I feel like things like tags, price, phone number, city and state are a little more set it and forget it. So um, MLS number is possible, but um, you have to have somebody updating this lead flow frequently to keep that updated. So for now, I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to save this lead flow. And let's just say I think, oh, that's a great lead flow. I want to use that for this other source as well. And again, remember, it gives us this intel. What's the source name? Typically, if they're buyer leads, it's usually buyers by default. Um, but some sources will send over a separate buyer and seller lead flow. We'll get into that in a minute, too, because you could potentially, again, route buyer leads from one source to a buyer group and seller leads from another source to a seller group. Uh, but what I want to show you here is if you want to copy those settings over, just click on advanced and then copy from other lead flows. And now once we click on this, we have the ability to, to select all the rules we set up. Or let's just say, hey, we don't have an open house tag applied to this source. So just pop these in and it'll copy those rules right into this lead flow. So it gives you the ability to control it by source, but also to copy any settings you have you might want to use more globally into... Um, other lead flows. So I'm, I'm not going to save that one, but I did want to hop down to, I think um, one of these here, the Silla one has got a pretty cool thing that if the phone number is empty, we want to separate out those leads. And the cool thing about that is we could send them to different people if we wanted to, but we could also have an action plan apply automatically that sends out a different action plan, something like hey, you know, we didn't get a good number for you or, or hey, is there a good time to talk? What's the best number to reach you on? You can run an action plan specific to the fact that they didn't give you a phone number um, as well as potentially routing them somewhere else. If you're getting, you know, social leads and if they don't have a phone number, you just want to email drip on them. You're not going to, you just want to set it and forget it. You could always route that here to a different group or to a pond um, and just stick them on an action plan and let that, action plan try to try to run its magic since they didn't come in with a phone number um one other example i want to cover in brief is like zillow in particular is your, if you're zillow flex you're going to get live transferred phone leads and i know a lot of us have plans in here running automatically that say you know hey is there a good time to talk or hey i'd love to connect with you soon you know um would it be fine you know okay to give you a call right now or something to that effect but with Zillow Flex in particular, you're being live transferred. So you certainly don't want to text or an email going out and say, hey, when's a good time to talk? Because you're literally on the phone with them. So another great use here to say, hey, you know, if the tag is Zillow connected, we need to send a, a similar but different action plan. I'll get into how to do this in a minute. Uh, a similar but different action plan so that doesn't have that initial text saying, hey, when's a good time to talk? Um, with Zillow in particular, be careful. You do not want to change the distribution because Zillow actually creates a separate lead flow for each of your agents because the assignment's done in Zillow. So be very careful to not change the assignment uh, in particular on a Zillow Flex um, because the lead flow is going to say rules for Zillow Flex buyer's agent name. So you're going to want to, as long as that agent's still on your team, you're going to want that agent to be in the distribution and not to route it to a group. Uh, Zillow Flex is a big exception in that case. So that's the only time when you would want to not mess with the actual routing. Let me hop here into groups for a minute because these are really important. This is where you would set a group to have certain agents in it to receive those leads. And you could also make that first to claim or round robin. So round robin would be where it goes to one, then the next, then the next. So like first lead goes to this person, next lead goes to this one, next lead goes to this one. First to claim obviously being where it pushes to all of these agents via the follow-up boss mobile app, and they have to claim it to get the contact info. You also additionally can set an amount of time they have to still claim it. And then what happens if no one claims it? You could set this to go to a specific agent, um, or back to another group or to a round robin group. So if nobody's first to claim, you could then send it to a round robin group. 
Um, but once you establish these groups, so make sure you name them well so they're really clear. Um, agents can sometimes in a roundabout way see these names, so be mindful of naming them. And just say, hey, these are the worst leads. Give them to the new agents. Um, but something like new rentals first to claim um, is great. Uh, sometimes it's nice to label it first to claim around Robin in the name. It does also show you here the type of distribution. Um, but so creating these groups is fantastic, except it doesn't do anything. You have to come into the lead flow and now say, sticking with my, I think it was my Zillow example. If we said, actually it was a different one. If we said, hey, we want to, you know, everybody that comes in in this price point, say less than 25,000, we want to assign it to this new rentals group that I just looked at. So the groups are lovely to set up, but they don't do anything until you put them into the lead flow. So this is where you would control to say, hey, all these leads that come in that are less than 25,000, let's route to this group. And again, because now we know these are rentals, we can potentially apply a different plan uh, and also not assign a lender because we know they're not looking to talk to a lender straight away. But again, you could run a specific rental action plan here, or maybe you don't want to plan on these rentals, but just have the agents follow up. You can control all of that right here in this specific uh, more advanced lead flow. So lenders work the same way as far as that goes. You are able to do lender groups. You cannot just, you can't do lenders and um, agents in the same group, but you can create um, a lender group, which isn't gonna be very effective in this case because I've only got one lender in this demo account. Um, but again, you would be able to do these as first to claim around Robin. So for example, if something like a, you're using something like a Ylopo where you have a lender paying for part of it, you could assign that particular Ylopo lead flow to go either specifically to that agent, to that lender, I'm sorry, or round robin or first to claim to a lender group. Say if the lender paying for it has two LOs, they want to receive the leads. Um, again, very similar to the agent routing, you could control here which lender that would go to. So I wanna dig into, I think I covered all the bits and pieces of the advanced settings. Um, and again, sometimes these are just where you wanna get them set, keep an eye on them, see how they work. You may still need to tweak. One example on that is things like rentals. Um, sometimes properties come in with a zero price on them. It doesn't mean they're a rental. So, you know, you may wanna add a condition here where it's like price, you know, is greater than, one. So that way we leave out the zeros um, and don't assume that they're a rental because again, it could be a piece of land. There could be many reasons that or certain lead sources may not send in a price. So you just be mindful of that. You may not want it to be only less than, you may want it to be more than zero, but less than 2,500. But again, as you use this a little bit, you'll start to see kind of the nuances of it and how it works. Um, again, the ability to route buyer and seller leads to different groups or different agents. Um, and then like we mentioned by price. So even if you had different listing agents and different price points or areas, you can easily do all of that here in the advanced settings and route them to the proper agent or group. So one last quick thing I wanna look at, we looked at lead flow and assignment and groups. Uh, I wanna look at the action plans real quick because sometimes like we mentioned, you may have an action plan you love, but you just don't want that first text to go out or you want one or two of the emails to be different, but you want it to be very similar. But you can come here in action plans, admin action plans, and this button right here will duplicate the plan. Now, I've already done this where I duplicated this plan into this one. And all I did on it, I named it no text, but left it the rest of it. So it was really clear that this is the same plan but the initial text is gone. So all I've done here is deleted this initial text, hit save. But again, now I've got here in the lead flow, kind of going back to the Zillow Flex example, going back to the Zillow Flex example, I could now potentially come in here and say, okay, well, if it's a Zillow connected, let's send that same plan, but let's just leave out the initial text and email that say, hey, when's a good time to talk? So 
some relatively basic stuff here. And again, it's not always what it seems. Zillow Flex creates individual flows for each agent and they'll come in with that agent's name here. Sometimes they just come in with the person's name who is the account owner, and then you would be able to change the routing. So definitely some things to learn here um, as you mess with it. And again, uh, I didn't cover this in depth, but you can route directly to a pond. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, unless maybe they're just Facebook leads that you're never going to call and you just want to drip on and kind of keep over time. But you can route directly to a pond or to a specific agent. I find most often that groups are really great. Another good use case for groups is the idea that if you come in here and assign these individually to agents and that agent's out of town or leaves the team or anything like that, you have to come back in here every time and edit these versus driving these to groups where all you have to edit is the group and then it updates your whole lead flow. So even if you've only got one agent taking leads right now, uh, you might consider setting these up as groups because as you grow, you'll have a bunch of lead flows. You don't want to have to come through and edit these all the time. You can simply change who is in the group. So I hope that's useful. Uh, certainly there's more advanced use cases and complicated things you could get into. Uh, but I just wanted to cover some of the essence of more advanced lead flows and some of the cool things you can do with them.